I'm a visual filmmaker as opposed to a literary filmmaker. So it the movie doesn't rest in the dialogue. It rests in the visuals. In episode one, we had established a very Art Nouveau, very fluid form. And episode four had a very sort of very um, industrial, engineered, angular shape. And so now we're kind of bridging that gap. So we're mixing a little bit of yeah, both. We're shooting back. Ultimately, the overriding factor on Obi-Wan's ship and all of the Jedi ship is that I wanted them to be reminiscent of the design of the Star Destroyers and the Imperial ships. Because ultimately, that's where those ships grew out of. I think we can begin to introduce the, the wedge shippy. Mm -hmm. When he saw the design, started to incorporate um, his um, new storyline to it. And so the whole idea of taking that shape and turning it into a Jedi fighter evolved with the design process. Yeah. Maybe take some World War I battleships, German, cut them off about halfway through, you know, take them top and bottom and <laughs> wedge him out a little bit. Okay. And then it's my job and the rest of the artists to come up with the background for that design and make it make sense so that no one questions the design when they see the film. Very boom down and then... Obi-Wan's Jedi fighter is actually one of the very first ships now that we're starting to see sort of uh, tying the aesthetic design that we've established in Episode 1 with the pre-existing designs of Episode 4. A tighter version. We're so familiar with um, that triangular shape as being the symbol or the icon for the Empire that to take that and actually uh, give it a new personality, a new identity, which is the, the spaceship in the shape for the Jedi Starfleet, was actually a really brilliant move and it actually made the whole symbolism very powerful because you can slowly see how everything slowly starts turning towards the dark side. And even this could have a little bit of a... George has the designs in his mind and, and he sort of is the master editor of all of this. So he decides what is within the realm of the Star Wars universe and what is beyond it. For every design that I use in the movie, there's at least 10 or 15 designs that get re rejected. That hair's going to be dry. In a I think mate. that's a big no, isn't it? I mean, none of it feels great to do. It always feels good to see, you know? Sort of come down as he starts to climb into it. Yeah, yeah. Obi-Wan's fighter actually evolved out of about a dozen sketches. My feeling is that these are like Jedi here. The only um, designs that are turned into a model are the ones that George finally gives the, his stamp of approval that this is the design. We'll do a real quick mock-up, whether it's a small little prototype or a little foam core study model. It's to carry the design to the next stage so George can actually pick it up and hold it and look at it. And from there, he'll usually have more suggestions to improve the design. The real problem was reducing it down to be a fighter, to be a really, you know, instead of being this huge, gigantic monster ship, be a little tiny, tiny ship. And I think one of the biggest issues was scale. How big do we make it or how small do we make it? Too small. <laughs> George will typically pick up a pencil or a pen and go and add his modifications to the designs or say, let's take you know, the cockpit of this drawing here and put it onto here. When I initially designed the ship into a single fighter, uh, there was really not any logical place to put a R2 unit. So this is the little RT unit, and he okay. actually can fit in there with a little bit of cheating. Okay. Uh, but he can't get in from the bottom, so is it okay if he drops in from yeah, the top? Drop in from the top. And will we see him do that, or? No. Okay, no. he'll just be there. Just a detail. Can he make his head go around so fast that it spins off? R4 is really an R2 painted red, isn't it? Careful what you're saying about R4, because you can get bopped on the head real quick. Ooh. Ooh. Actually, we could have got the angle just right. And done it. I've always wanted to have my own ship, and he gets one, and he gets to take off on his own adventure in this one, which is cool. In action. I mean, you're sitting in a in a wooden ship, being rocked around by guys, and so um, to see it, I, I'm sure, because I haven't seen it yet, will be extraordinary. Cut. Cut that. Okay, that was good. Cut I that. loved it. That was, that was beautiful. That was magnificent. Sorry, totally solid.